just ahead on American Black Journal, love and relationships. That's the focus of the new stage play, Married But Single 2. I'll talk with the creator and some of the cast members. Plus, a look at the Black History Month programs at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. Stay right there. American Black Journal starts now. American Black Journal is funded by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, a partner with communities where children come first. How does diversity bring energy to us all? At DTE Energy, we believe that it's the contributions of all that build great communities. As a company, we grow stronger by welcoming the unique perspectives of everyone. As community members, we support our state's broad culture and heritage. From working closely with women and minority-owned suppliers to embracing our local cultures, DTE Energy is powering diversity. The DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of Detroit Public Television. Welcome to American Black Journal, I'm Stephen Henderson. Last year, the stage production of Married But Single played to sold out audiences across the country. The sequel, Married But Single 2, is premiering here in Detroit this week. The play examines love and relationships in the African American community. Today, I am pleased to welcome the play's creator, Jacarius Johnson, along with cast members, Lisa Ray McCoy, Bill Bellamy and Shante Moore. Welcome okay. to American Black Journal. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right, so I'm just gonna put this out there. Married but single. That sounds like you're trying to start something. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't be married but single right, too. Right. What, what the, talk about the title there and what that means. Well, we're we trying to start a little bit. We're trying to start the love train going around again. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really a piece about how um, the transition from single to being married, because you know a lot of married people want to be single, a lot of single people want to be married, sure. and we're always examining other people's, you know, circumstances and situations, thinking that, that the grass is greener. Right. <laughs> but so we take a comedic uh, and very entertaining look at single people and married uh, people. So the the play is not specifically just about married couples, yeah. but we examine singles, we examine marriage, wherever you are in the relationship totem pole you will get an exciting ride. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. And, and at the end, everything works out okay for everybody? Or, uh, you gotta come you see gotta it come now. See it. Yeah. 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 Don't try to get a sneak peek. <laughs> That's right. I haven't even paid for tickets yet. Uh, uh, Bill Bellamy, uh, the, the favorite work of yours that uh, the, for me is the movie Love Jones. Yes. Where, oh, thank you. Uh, where it's, it's also a movie about love and relationships Absolutely. in the African American community, but you were a troublemaker in yeah, that film, I was are you a very uh, huge troublemaker in, in Love Jones? People were mad at me about that. Are you a troublemaker in this play too? No, um, in this what do you mean no? <laughs> well, kind of, sort of, but not as bad, right? Not Just a little bad. bit. So actually, I'm an antagonist. <laughs> okay, in a how way. is that different from troublemaker? <laughs> That's a nice way to say it. So anyway, okay. In this particular uh, stage play, I play Jackson Kelly, right? Jackson Kelly is a. Uh, a love interest. As a troublemaker. No. He's a troublemaker. I am trying to rekindle a love affair okay. with her and her character. And it just is one of those things that happened when I was married. I yeah. was married at the time she was not married. And we had this tryst and it was so good <laughs> and it just ended kind of abruptly uh, because I was married. Right. So it shut down. Right. And uh, now I'm not married. And um, and I want her. I want her back. I want yeah. her. She was the best thing that ever happened to me in my life, and and I come back into her life at a little awkward timing. <laughs> and it's, it's it's that thing where that one person in your life you have that chemistry with. Yeah. So whenever he touch you, whenever he call you, whenever you hear his voice, whenever you think about him, it's like mm. yeah. <laughs> you get right. weak for him, and then right. you know you can't really be around that kind of person because when you're married, yeah. you want to try to stay married. Right. You know, yeah. and so it's like I, I, uh -huh. <laughs> so you're constantly the tug and war of. Right. Right. Realizing that you're married, but are you in love? Are you happy? Yeah. What am I going to do? Am I going to test the waters a little bit more? Should we yeah. do it? Should we not? You know, it's that kind of thing. It's a dance. Yeah, you know? yeah. very cool. It's about me. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was about me. What about, uh, <laughs> what about the female roles here? I'm always curious about uh, uh, the female roles in, in stories like this, and particularly when they're African-American stories, how they're told, how they're sort of put together, how they differ. From the male roles, talk about uh, how that works. Well, I can only speak for myself in this role. I think that she's helping 
by being a hindrance. Okay. <laughs> That's probably the best way to say it. Right? Yeah. What kind That's of hindrance mystery. What kind of hindrance are you? Well, well, I'm a bit like Bill in this in this play. Okay. Um, I'm I'm here to stir the pot just a bit. And I think that's a good thing because usually if we don't have opposition, we don't figure out who we are without trouble. Yeah. So I'm I'm a little bit of a trouble. A temptation. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I well, that's an important tension in a story like this. Yeah. Right? You gotta Absolutely. have that. Look, you gotta have the good with the bad, and everything is for the greater good in the Absolutely. end. Absolutely. Yeah. So. You know, so you just gave away the end little, right there. No, now I don't have to go no, see it. Not necessarily a little. Oh, you want to little, you know, <laughs> so you, you, you know, sometimes uh, uh, faithfulness is great. Sometimes yeah. uh, infidelity is not so great but necessary to uh -huh. restore faithfulness. Yeah. You see yeah. what I'm saying? So, you, you know, we, we're going to twist some things. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it seems to me like uh, stories like these now, when they involve African-American characters, have a lot more breath. They have a lot more room to sort of go around than they did 10, 15, 20 years right, ago. Yeah. That there's, there's more of an acceptance of the idea that, uh, you know, that the, the complexity of these relationships uh, is okay in an African-American concept, that it's a, in a, a context, that it's okay to tell these kind of stories. And it's so real because here's the thing that I realize is that when I look at the relationship between my mom and my dad, she's the kind of woman that stuck there and took all kind of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then her mother, you know, got married at 16 and had right. all these kids and mm -hmm. it's like, and your whole life was just taking care of the kids and the husband and that was just it. You know, so now you, you leave that and you have these new millennium women that's like, I'm working and I'm taking care of my husband and I'm taking care of my kids and I'm doing, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You know, we can do it all, yeah. but then you still have the man's mentality sometime that's like, I'm the breadwinner or I just want you to stay here. And we're like, no, I want to do that, <laughs> but I want to be able to do this if right. I can. Right. You know, so, you know, right now, while we're having all these, you know, the reality star shows that's depicting us as, you know, different type of women, I believe in TMI. They, yeah. they give TMI. It's like too much information. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And that's so now, you know, the realness of what we have to show because of what we're up against in the competition of what the shows are showing now, yeah. you got to be able to be transparent. Huh, you got to be able to say, this uh, is what I'm dealing with. Yes. And I'm sure you've dealt with it. You just don't want to talk about <laughs> right, it. Right, yeah. right. You know what I mean? So we're going to show it to you. So then even inside and then you, inside your mind, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe, I, yeah, maybe I can I deal with it that, that way. Right? Yeah. I didn't even think about it that way. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's just a way to show you how others thought, yeah. how yeah. others can deal with things, yes. and how you maybe can be able to take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this from here, and say, <laughs> you know what, I'm going to put all this together and yeah. do it differently and yeah. try something. I think, ahead, I think it addresses a couple issues, right? I think women, if women came together with their girls mm -hmm. to the play, they're going to be like, girl, blah, 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 blah. And like, girl, you know that was you, that was you. You know, mm -hmm. and then if you come with your, your, your significant other, your, your wife, your husband, or whatever, you, it's going to make you appreciate your relationship because a lot of times when we're in our relationship, we don't really see the value because we work it every day. We're not <laughs> stepping out and looking back. I think the good thing about this play is, is that it makes you appreciate, you know, who you are, yeah. where you are. And where you are. Yeah, yeah. you know, you're like, yeah. where are we in our relationship? Because when we're, when we're rehearsing, I, I do the same thing. You know, I think about it, and I'm just like, I was there once before. I know this part right here real well. So <laughs> and isn't it sometimes hard, like, not to yeah. be yourself sometime in your character? Because sometimes I read something, I go, I wouldn't do this. And I go, oh, man, yeah, I wouldn't, you know, right, she right. That's is. That's a role. You know? Right, right, <laughs> right. I would never I don't do that. I like right. this, you know, you know this line here, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> the thing that I think is amazing, the magnet, is love will make you do anything. Yeah. You know, when uh, you're, right. when you're, when you're in love and you really care about somebody, <laughs> there's no limit to what you can or want to do, right? right? In my particular case, my love for her was so powerful that Hi, I want to... Sharon <laughs> Carter. Thank you. That would be my character. Sharon, Sharon Carter. Right. That's right. Sharon Carter is one of those kind of love affairs that everybody wants in their life. Like that one time in your life that you met somebody that was your music, like yeah. your like sound, like you, you didn't even you think. You pull your hair from the back. Yeah. Of the everything, of, everything about them. Uh, this is a public yeah, television show. Like, Hello. So they rub your shoulder they nicely. Say, see, that's all right. right. Be transparent. Nice. No. But like, you know, the yin and the yang. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of times, we pray for that favorite song in our life that yeah. you know when you hear it, you go, "Oh my God!" Right? So That's I want. It's a great analogy. I know. Let's say he took yeah, it there. Look at that. Right. I like now. that. You know, it's it's like a great song. Is that, oh my God right. in my life, and I think what I want to show people is that "Oh my God" is 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 a, a blessing and a curse sometimes because yeah. you want it. It's like you want to hear another song. You want another day. Right. 
but maybe it may not fit in a time frame or whatever, but we showed that it was real, you know, we showed yeah. that it was just one of those connects that's just like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Gotta wait. Gotta uh, wait! Talk about uh, the inspiration that you draw on to, to, to write these these plays. I got married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is autobiographical <laughs> there. Right. Huh? Yeah, well look, uh, to me, um, art is a mirror for life and a rehearsal for change, yeah. right? So. Say my, that again, man. I like it. Like that. <laughs> that's pretty good, too. Look art, at all art. the deep uh, thoughts coming <laughs> out of right. this table. And, and that's what it is. You know, my, my job is to create a mirror for people so they see themselves, yeah. but rehearse change, which is alternate endings to decisions that you may have made that led you down the wrong path. Yeah. You know, and, and under that path is scar tissue. And so I'm like a surgeon trying to repair that scar tissue and bring you back to a place yeah. called love again. That look a little like yeah. lentil sucker. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, get it out of there. Yeah, <laughs> so, so I imagine that to, to pull off a play like this on a stage, there has to be a lot of chemistry and maybe more uh, among the cast than for other for other kinds of stories. Is that is that true? I mean, I'm somebody who's never acted, so I'm guessing at that. Oh, yeah. But the, the chemistry probably looks a little different uh, in a production like this. I think it's wonderful. I was talking about that earlier today mm -hmm. and how I'm, I'm a solo artist, so I don't get to have this kind of interaction professionally so much. Okay. So I am enjoying the fact that He's crazy. <laughs> she crazy. We all have a, we're crazy. I think anybody in yeah, the industry is right. a little bananas. Yeah. But but I love that they're professional. They're kind off and on stage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I think is the most beautiful part. And that's where I think the chemistry on stage happens yeah. because we actually are caring for each other and we're you know behind each other and we're also having fun yeah. off stage. Sure. So on stage you get to have that extra extra piece. You have to find the funny. You know you have to be able to be in an environment where you can try different things. Yeah. And if it doesn't safe. work. You know, right, to feel safe, you know, because yeah. if you feel like, oh, I have to just walk this this line, then yeah. it's kind of like, you know, just, you know, we can all come and be professional, but, you know, like she said, if we're just, they like, blah, we're right. crazy, and it's like, it's fun, and it's right. like, you know, boom, ting, you know, <laughs> and then you, when you're around a comedian, you know, <laughs> I try to one up him, you know what I mean, because so, I know he's going to just be right. here with him, right. you know, <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to shine, too, too, and get his life, you know, and, uh, yes, and so no, Carl is well. also in this mix, so yeah, he's yeah, 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 it's fun. Well, and the, the the chemistry between your character and her character that has to be oh, it's it's intense, right? It's real. Right, I'm it's saying, it's really real. real. I feel it right now. Because although you're doing a comedy, there's <laughs> moments in there where yeah. you have to be real and you got to feel it. Yeah. And I, I remember even, you know, the other night when we were rehearsing, I said this line, and before I knew it, I was really tearing up. Mm -hmm. And it was like, where is that coming from? But I went with it because I wanted to be true to what I was feeling and work with that and see yes. if it worked. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it was, it was a, really an emotion nice. that came up that was like, wow, you know, we really had that. And if <laughs> I don't really have that over here, it's a yearning that's like, do I get a little taste of this <laughs> more to maybe take it over here? Right, right. Would that be wrong wow. to do that? Or do I just study what had happened over here, remember what had happened over here and bring it over <laughs> and here? And bring it here. You know here, what I mean? Or yeah. just, you know, so it, it touched me in a way that I think I'm going to use that in one, yeah. one night. I think it's my eyes. <laughs> my eyes did that. You know, actually, you, know, you weren't even looking like at me. <laughs> no. no, you didn't say <laughs> nothing, so it was actually it just your heart. Heart. It was, it was your my heart. ears there. My so ears, I was turned to the side. No, I think it was something on my face. My nose, no? Something <laughs> has them in a trance. It was all about me, really. It was my truth. It was your truth. Your honesty. <laughs> All right, so the play starts Tuesday. How long does it run here in Detroit? Uh, through Sunday. Okay. The 19th, All February right. 19th. All right. So. Do you do you find Detroit audiences more receptive uh, to this kind of story? You yeah, should. The yeah, answer is yes. Absolutely. <laughs> well, not only receptive, but Detroit is great. Like th that's why I, this is the premiere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And we chose Detroit to premiere because Detroit tells us the truth. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, they talk uh, back to us. Well, I was going to say, yeah. they get into the story, the they talk back to us. Go ahead, you yeah. look good, girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell them that. That's right. Make He's you want to break the fourth wall. I was going like... to say, you can't get away with too much uh, with the audience here. So, yeah, we love yeah. Detroit. Right. And it helps yeah. us as a performer, you know, when they let us know what they're liking, the applause and the clap and the talk back, yeah. that makes us feel a little bigger and it, it feeds our ego because, you know, we are <laughs> performers. Right. performers. Right. And they like, like to know, they like to know they're doing something right, and Detroit lets you know. And if you're doing something wrong, we'll let you know. Let, let us know that we too. Oh, it's so funny because you know what? One time I said this line wrong last year, yeah. and I heard myself after it came out, but I just let it roll, right? And then somebody said, "No, nah, that don't sound right." <laughs> 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 
right. They will tell you, right? Oh, and I came on stage thinking, who was that? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. All right. Uh, well, congratulations and welcome to Detroit. Thank, Thank you. you. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Coming up next, uh, the Charles H. Wright Museum is celebrating Black History Month. But first, here's a 1993 Detroit Black Journal interview with filmmaker Robert Townsend about his movie, Meteor Man. Do you feel that there are a lack of role models in movies today? Well, as it relates to African Americans, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, when people say Robert Townsend, I represent kind of the balance factor. I mean, my movies will always have a level of, you know, integrity, quality. I'm going to go for things that'll make people laugh, pe things that'll make people cry. This particular film, there, were, there, there have been no films for African American children. I think that's important that they have something. They can go see Home Alone or Sandlot, but I think it's kind of refreshing to see themselves on the screen and somebody that looks like them fighting and standing for something and having some kind of courage rather than being the second banana or the sidekick. But if, if anything, if, if somebody says Robert Towns and I'm an image buster, I always want to do something to say that there's another side. Black History Month is a busy time at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. The museum is open every day during February, and it's going to offer activities that are both educational and inspirational for families. Joining me now is the museum's senior vice president, Lanisha DeBartolayman, along with poet, author, and publisher Jessica Care Moore, and Piper Carter, who is the founder of an event celebrating the legacy of music producer Jay Dilla. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you. Yeah. So Lanisha, we see you every year at yes. this time, and I get yes. very excited about it. <laughs> so <laughs> to, do we. <laughs> to talk about the things that are gonna go on at the museum this month. Uh, we should say up front, uh, the museum is doing really interesting things, really important things all year long. It's not just one <laughs> month, but this month is, is special. It is. Yeah. Every year is special for us. We have a calendar full of really engaging, dynamic, really robust programs that really engage um, people of all ages. Starting today, we have the Dilla Youth Day that we'll talk more about. Yeah. So the second Sunday of every month is free. Uh, to the public. Mm -hmm. It's called our DTE Energy Foundation Free Day. So today is free, free admission. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk more about Dilla Youth Day. But throughout the month, tomorrow, we will be doing a historic stamp unveiling honoring Dr. Dorothy Height. Yeah. Later on this month, we will have panel discussions and lectures commemorating the 1967 Detroit Rebellion. Uh, we will have a variety of activities throughout the entire month. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dilla Day, let's talk about that. I'm pretty excited about that, yeah. actually. So Piper. actually, I do the Dilla Youth Day. Yeah. And so <laughs> that event is really exciting to me because I really, really, really love serving young people. Uh -huh. So um, the day, oh my goodness, we need like four shows for me to tell you like about it for real. Yeah, no, I know. But um, in brief, it celebrates the life and legacy of the late great Jay Dilla, yeah. who created Neo Soul. Mm -hmm. And he learned how to open up an, an instrument called the MPC, mm -hmm. which is a beat machine. Yes. And Amp Fiddler, who is also from a section on the east side of Detroit called Conant Gardens, uh -huh was his mentor yeah. and helped him learn how to do that. And so we love, the basic uh, idea of the day is to help young people connect with engineering and arts and math mm -hmm. through music and through using that story and that legacy. So um, it's, yeah. it's a whole day of uh, making, uh, focus yeah, on Yeah, I mean, they, they, they get to come out and, and actually do these hands things, on. right? Hands-on. Everything's hands-on. Uh, it's yeah. no lectures. Yeah. Yeah, no lectures. It's yeah. all about um, them participating. Learning to do. Creating. Yeah. Um, yeah. And teaching. Right. They're also teaching. So we have this year um, 3D printers. We've added that. We've added, um, uh, actually, this year we're going to be partnering with um, Underground Resistance, uh -huh. uh, Mike Banks, mm -hmm. one of the creators of Techno Music, yeah. and they're going to be teaching synthesizers and beat making to young people. Um, cool. We actually have Dilla's daughters who are teenagers now and wow. um, they're stepping into their leadership role. Yeah. They're going to be hosting the performance. You know, it, it's my sense that, that uh, there is a, a sort of renewed interest or, or maybe uh, not renewed but new interest in, in Jay Dilla that, that is sort of converging right now. And it's not just here in Detroit. I mean, I got a call from someone in New York a few weeks ago who's coming uh, to do some research uh, about that. He's sort of becoming a bigger, more known quantity, I guess. Thank goodness. Yeah. Um, he is one of the quintessential inventors of our time. Yeah. Um, and I think one reason that um, he's probably hidden is because he's a music producer. Yeah. 
Right. And so that role typically is like a background role. Yeah. Yeah. Um, however, he's produced, I mean, um, Erica Badu, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I mean, you name it. I could go on yeah. and on. Janet Jackson. Yeah. He's um, behind the sound he's of the, the tribe called Quest. He's the Quincy Jones of his era. Pretty uh, much. Era, yeah. Only a little different yeah. in that he also mixed it he with could, electronics uh, right. and, right. and the engineering piece. Yeah. And, and so he's kind of like, uh, he has that kind of <laughs> extra Motown yeah. thing going on that's really special here. Yeah. You yeah. know, the yeah. creation of a sound. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, very, very exciting. And that's mm -hmm. today at the, at the museum. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Jessica, yes. talk about your event is not part of Black History Month, technically, <laughs> but it's part it of Women's here. History Month, <laughs> yeah. but that's all right. Yeah, Black Women Rock. You know, yes, <laughs> You're here. Extension of right. Black History Month is just we're going to um, celebrate the women who play rock and roll music. And uh, Black Women Rock has been around for 13 years. Mm -hmm. I founded it at the National Black Arts Festival as a tribute to Betty Davis, and it is still absolutely that. This year, um, because we're at the Charles H. Wright, and we are celebrating that 50th uh, rebellion year. Mm -hmm. It is the the theme of this year is rebel women, mm -hmm. and I think we need rebel women right now more than ever because <laughs> we need rebel they, everybody, right? Rebel now, everybody, right? you know. But when women <laughs> rebel together, yeah. um, and black women yeah. in particular, um, I think spiritually there's a there will be a shift. So I'm hoping to be a shape shifter uh, along with the <laughs> black queens on um, March 18th. The concert um, normally sells out. The tickets are absolutely on sale already um, or at Charles H. Wright um, at the site. You can find them at blackomarock.com. And we have a credible lineup, you know, um, Divinity Rocks, who's one of our stars that always keeps coming back, is coming back. Um, we have some new sister um, out of Oakland I'm not going to name. I want to keep some of them a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Nabasha Dea, formerly of Fertile Grounds, coming. Stephanie Christian, who is our Detroit icon, is um, is playing um, Timur Kali, Afropunk goddess. Mm -hmm. And so this is about celebrating women of color who play rock and roll music. Yeah, it's right. not like black women rock. Yeah, it's cool. It's like black women rock, like guitar. Rock, really rock, and, right? Um, <laughs> and then on Sunday, you know, the 19th, we have our community talk, which is really important because we ask people to come do this rock concert, but then come back at one o'clock in the afternoon. I give them donuts and coffee, mm -hmm. and we have this really amazing talk. And this year it's called Sister Fire. Yeah. It's a series of conversations I'm having with women of color and radical white women if they come to show up and uh, to support our voices mm -hmm. um, to talk about what we need to do radical healing radical organizing and institution building um, in this climate and mm -hmm. so yeah black on the rock is the is, is the big thing for women's history <laughs> month at the Charles H. Wright yeah. and I'm, I'm thankful that we still get to bring it there yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, Lanisha uh, talk more about the commemoration of 67 uh, this year at the during Black History at the so we have Museum. yes we've themed <coughs> our, our entire programming year the year of rebellion mm -hmm. so we will be focusing on the 67 rebellion throughout the year in the month of February we have two key lectures and panel discussions that will take place about the 67 rebellion because we look not just at what happened in Detroit but what was what was country. yeah what was going on around the country mm -hmm. regarding rebellion and people uprising and so uh, we have two really dynamic programs on that. But throughout the month of February, we have uh, great storytelling programs. The Society of Twisted Storytellers yes, will take my, place uh, third Friday. <laughs> one of my sort of co's <laughs> partners, I guess, uh, at, uh, at WDET. Absolutely, uh, yeah. absolutely. But we wonderful, also have wonderful organization. Fabulous, yeah. fabulous. We have a wonderful exhibition called I See Me, Reflections in Black Dolls. Mm -hmm. So on February 25th, we're going to be celebrating International Pretty Brown Girl Day, mm -hmm. and we'll have some special tours through that exhibition. Yeah, so a yeah. lot to do. Yeah. We'll be celebrating John Henry Clark this year, oh, a tribute to him. Really mm -hmm. wonderful. Yes, in <laughs> February. Yeah. So. Yeah. And and as I said, the museum is open every day uh, through February, and that second Sunday of the month is free. Uh, Absolutely. Pe people can come out and and participate in, in these things. And one of the th cool things about Black History Month at the museum, I always say, is that participation that you yes. get to. You get to do things. It's Absolutely. Not just uh, sitting and listening. Yes, yeah. yes. And we're there every single day this, this month. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, how can people find out more about what they can go do at the museum? Yes, all of our activities are on our website. Yeah. So, we encourage folks to go to www.theright.org. They mm -hmm. can call our front desk and follow us on all of our social media platforms as well. Right. Okay. Uh, Jay Deladay, uh, we've got yes. about a minute left. So, so you got to be come today. That's today. Yes, uh, 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock are the hands-on workshops, and 6 o'clock until 8 o'clock is the youth performances. Yeah. So it's really exciting. It's really fun, really creative, mm -hmm. and you got to be here, and it's for everyone. Uh, it's one of those things that gets uh, young kids interested in that science thing, which we really yes. need to be yeah. pushing. And it's all especially ages. Especially with 
with girls, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, and there's uh, plenty of girls that come. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, and it's all ages. So we have early childhood yeah. with activities, yeah. and we have a teen center and everything in between. Yeah. And even people that are not children. <laughs> yeah. Even people that are not children, yeah. right? Just Young at heart, yeah. <laughs> right. And just supporters of hip-hop culture. And supporters culture. of hip-hop. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> congratulations to all of you on the programming, and uh, we'll see you at the right. Okay. Thank you. Thank right. you. That's our program for today. Thanks for watching. You can get more information about our guests at AmericanBlackJournal.org, and you can always connect with us on Facebook and on Twitter. We'll see you next time. American Black Journal is funded by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, a partner with communities where children come first. How does diversity bring energy to us all? At DTE Energy, we believe that it's the contributions of all that build great communities. As a company, we grow stronger by welcoming the unique perspectives of everyone. As community members, we support our state's broad culture and heritage. From working closely with women and minority-owned suppliers to embracing our local cultures, DTE Energy is powering diversity. The DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of Detroit Public Television.